Hey guys, we are in the kitchen today and in typical Hickory Crow Farm fashion, which was a New Year's resolution uh, to get a little bit better at being organized and getting some projects done, uh, we're coming back to our sugar beets. Um, now, they were not stored correctly. They were kind of forgotten about. So we're not 100% sure if this is going to amount to anything, but we would like to still attempt to make sugar. So I'm gonna turn you around and show you what they're looking like right now. Not very good. And uh, we'll see what we can get out of this. So here we have our bucket of what once was a bunch of sugar beets. As you can see, many of them have shriveled to nothing. Um, so I've got a few that are still a decent size, very kind of soft, but we're gonna try and take the skin off these and uh, try and boil them up and see if we can get anything. I've read mixed things. Uh, some people don't take the skin off, some people do, but I have heard that not peeling them leaves them with a very beety taste in comparison. So since we have so few anyways, we are going to try and get some of this off and it might just be a little bowl or a little uh, saucepan that we're going to boil up but we're going to try and make our sugar water first and then we will begin boiling that down and see if we can eventually get some sugar crystals it'll be a fun experiment and this is by no means deterred us from next year well i guess it's this year now with planting we ordered a lot of sugar beets we are going to give it a shot and see what we can do but this is just kind of a trial run so we have all of our um, sugar beets cleaned up, peeled. Uh, it was quite a process considering they had shriveled and dried out over the last few months. Um, but anyways, we have salvaged a bit. So we're gonna make a weight of that first and see what we started with and then kind of see what we get for sugar because that was part of the experiment. I am under no delusions. I think we might get a tablespoon of sugar out of this, but at least we will know it works and so on. So we're going through all this process for a very little amount of reward, but that's okay. So one thing we noticed was uh, after they were peeled, if the roots were exposed to air, much like a lot of uh, other vegetables, they actually turned, they went a blackish color, which uh, for extracting sugar, we don't think will uh, affect them whatsoever, but that's why some of them look a little odd. So we're going to start with getting a weight of these. Now one thing that we have noticed as I let these sit for a while, the sugar has already leached into this water. So this is the water I am going to cook them in. So I'm just kind of taking them out of it to get a weight of the actual initial root. So I've got my scale off here or on now to weight to zero. Some of those black ones do look pretty awful, but you can see when I get down to the ones that were at the bottom that didn't get exposed to air, they are just fine. So. I'm gonna assume it's the same as potatoes. <laughs> Doesn't matter if they do get exposed. And go a little discolored. Actually, I have more than I thought. I don't know, oh, let's get that out of there. I'm not sure if they're going to uh, fit all into this one container. But yes, this water, if you actually taste it, is very sweet already. Um, as a side note, we did actually try eating one of these. We cut off a piece and did eat it. Man, it was like eating what would you call it like sugar it was it was like eating sugar it was still beet texture but it was definitely sugar so we have almost three pounds we're two pounds 14 ounces so almost three pounds so my next step is going to be to run them through the greater portion of my food processor which I won't take you through because it's very loud um, but I'll bring you back once I've got them all grated and they're going to go into our pot and like I said, I'm going to use the initial water that I had saved or I had them soaking in because of the amount of sugar that's already leached into that water. So we've got all of our almost three pounds of sugar beets uh, grated and into our pot. So uh, I transferred the um, water that they had been sitting in as well as added probably close to a liter and a half uh, so there's probably about two liters of water in here with the grated um, uh, sugar beets. So as you can see, there's a bit of discoloration with the exposure to the air. Uh, I'm not sure that that could have been avoided. I know this is not going to make a white sugar. We're not bleaching it. It's going to be more of a brown sugar anyways. 
So, as I said, this is our first time doing this total experiment. So uh, you guys are along for the ride as we figure out uh, just how to do this. But we're going to let this come to a boil and then you're going to let it simmer for approximately two hours. And then we will um, strain it and uh, come back there. All right, so it has been boiling for almost uh, two hours. And as you can see, the liquid has basically kind of steamed off, which I think is probably a good thing. Now, these are basically soft, kind of like uh, if you were buying um, those frozen shredded hash browns, that's basically what they are. Very tasty as well, I've been eating a couple. Uh, super sweet. But we're just going to transfer this now, hopefully I can do it without making too terribly much mess, into our little cheesecloth strainer here. And we're just gonna let that drain for eh, probably half an hour or so. Just wanna make sure we get as much of the liquid out of here as possible. And then we'll bring it back to uh, cook down again. Um, right now we're not even at a syrup state. This would be called sugar water, I think. Um, but still feeling pretty positive about what's gonna come from this. That's the uh, liquid that we've gotten so far. It's quite dark. I also noticed there's quite a sediment on the bottom, so I might look at that to see if there's something you can do about that. But uh, anyways, that's squeezed out by hand so far, and I'm going to multi-purpose my cheese press, and I'm just gonna put that in there and see if I can squeeze out any more before uh, we call her quits on what is out of there for liquid. Sorry, I should've got all the pieces beforehand. But we're gonna see if this will press out anymore. The one thing that I noticed, or I, I've learned about the sugar beets in my research while we're doing this, is uh, they are between 15 and 17% um, sugar content. So compared to regular beets, which are only 5%. So in theory, if you did 10 pounds of beets, you should get one and a half pounds of sugar. Oh, actually there is liquid coming out. I think in the uh, grand scheme of things next year, if we do this on a bigger scale, I would use our apple presses outside to uh, do the liquid extraction. Oh, I might have squished too much. Look, it's bubbled above the uh, press part. Oh, forbidden to have. Yeah. So anyways, we're going to uh, get the most that we can get out of there and then um, get it started boiling and see you basically need to boil it down to be kind of a honey consistency. So that can take anywhere from four to 12 hours pending. So we'll see how we do. So as usual, when you're trying something new, uh, everything went a little bit quicker than expected so I'm in the middle of making dinner when my beet sugar water all of a sudden just condensed right down. Now I'm not a maple syrup maker I don't know if this is what happens with maple syrup as well but we'll show you here it went right down into this syrupy boiling kind of mass which I think is what it's supposed to do so I'm going to turn the heat off. You can see there as I take it off the heat. Sorry, it's steaming up, isn't it? It's just kind of, I don't even know. That's kind of maple syrupy. <laughs> um, so I'm going to let that cool off a little bit, but kind of keep stirring it so it doesn't stick to the pan. And then the next thing to do is put it into, uh, um, you would want to put it on a cookie sheet, but I've heard that it's very hard to get off the cookie sheet. So I'm actually trying one of my, um, silicone uh, pans. That way I can pop the bottom out once this sets. So we're going to let it cool off a little bit and then we're going to pour it in there and from what I understand a little bit of sugar sprinkled in there causes it to crystallize into that sugar and we should in theory have sugar. It's uh, I don't know if I should have skimmed that a bit more it says to go for a honey consistency, but I think as this cools, it's gonna be awfully hard. Like it's hardening on the uh, spatula as I stir it. So, and it tastes amazing. I could actually just eat beet, sugar beet syrup. I mean, it was as good as maple syrup. So there you have it in the, sorry, I'm blocking light, in the pan 
We're just gonna let that cool down. It's already sticking. I think it's gonna harden quite well. I'm a little bit concerned that might be too thick. It's kind of all an experiment, but it is, it's really hot, so I can't even demonstrate right at this moment, but it is so good. It smells good. Oh my gosh, it's like eating melted candy. It is, it's like those, remember those little like candy sticks that you would get at the, the candy store, the little, they're straight sticks of pure sugar. Oh, That's yeah. what that tastes like. Wow. Yep. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Awesome. Super excited. Stay tuned. So I haven't 100% found perfect information on when I should add the sugar to this um, to make it kind of crystallize. Now, it says only a little sprinkling, but I've had mixed things on when it's cold, when it's gone. And my thoughts are once this cools, the sugar's just gonna sit on top. It's not gonna get into it to form the crystals. So I'm gonna sprinkle a little bit on now. Uh, it is, I mean, I can put my finger in it. It's not hot, hot. So I'm just gonna take a little pinch and just kind of sprinkle. So you can see it's already sitting on top instead of going under. Um, but apparently that's supposed to help it crystallize. Now you can do it without doing this. I think it just speeds the process. So I'm gonna go with that. As I said, this is all an experiment. You guys are coming along for the ride. And next year we may do it completely different. <laughs> but we're super excited about this right now. Even if we only used it as syrup, it would be worth growing a lot of these. Day one of uh, crystallization, I guess we wanna call it. Uh, as we were saying earlier, uh, it, we've read that it takes 8 to 12 days for full crystallization so we are you know it's still got a little bit of movement I don't know if it's captured there you can see it kind of still syrupy but we've definitely got some forming on the top so here we are day two and uh, you can see it's got quite a, a crystal uh, layer. Thing, layer going on on top um, so it's definitely uh, definitely starting. So here we are, uh, day three, and uh, doesn't look too much different on top, but you can see it's uh, definitely crystallizing quite a bit. And here we are, day four, and it uh, probably doesn't look a lot different, but you can see, if I move it around, you can see the crystals. We are now day five. I don't know, every time I take this out, it kind of looks like it's uh, crystallizing more. You can see it's not underneath, but uh, the crystals are definitely growing. Here we are, I think it's day six, if I'm not mistaken. I think yesterday was five, I'm losing track. But you can see it's uh, really getting some nice crystals on it in some sections. So I'm gonna keep uh, letting it sit, see where it ends up. So we are on day 14, I believe now, and we finally, I think, have done it. So uh, this has been a goal for us, uh, probably for the whole year in this experiment, to have a final product of sugar. It's an excellent prep. If you are a prepper, it is a fantastic uh, resource to be able to create yourself. That was something that we were aiming for on the farm was, uh, not being dependent on the store for that sugar that we might need for canning even. Uh, and or, the, just, or the potential to not be dependent. Yes, the potential. Uh, now, one thing that uh, we found is we probably are gonna need to grow a whole lot of sugar beets. But lucky for us, we did buy a whole lot of sugar beet seeds to get us going again this year. So without uh, any more delay, we're going to check out how our sugar turned out. Check it out and do the last bit of processing. Yeah. So here it is. So one thing uh, you can see it's it's dried out pretty good. It's kind of become like a uh, it's kind of become like a I don't know like a brittle almost. But one thing we found um, as we kind of dried it, even past so most of it was pretty dry by the eighth day. But we actually had to flip some of it over because the back was still sticky, um, which is kind of why we let it go a little bit longer. But uh, yeah, 
future. learning curve in the future, we would probably ruck it up a little as it earlier. started drying, rather than thinking it was going to completely dry. Maybe we laid it out on the pan too thick. Uh, there's a lot of different things that we can try and do next time. But you can see there it's crystallized really nice. So we are going to put this in the food processor and see if we can grind it up into a bit more of a powder. So we're just going to use our regular food processor and drop these guys in. I will admit the whole family has had a few snacky pieces of this already. It's quite um, good. It was so delicious and the syrup was even very good too. So lots of things we can do with these. Whoa! Hmm, it may take more than this to break it up. So at the beginning we said this was an experiment. One thing I'm seeing now, which probably would have been a smarter idea, was to do this before it completely had dried. Um, now we're left with these really hard little crystals, which, I mean, it's either going into a baby fine powder, as you can see on my fingers, or we're left with these bigger crystals. So I'm not really sure the best method to go from here. I think grinding it up more is not the answer. I might take the mortar and pestle and... Uh, yeah, just smash hand smash it up. Ones. So that's, uh, we tried this and it's working not too bad. So that's kind of about the size that we're left with, but we can uh, certainly grind it up here in the uh, mortar and pestle. Whoops, I have a little bit too many in here. Well, and you were just mentioning you would probably want a uh, I bet you if you had a grain grinder, you could do this easy. I bet you it would go through a grain grinder. Maybe. So he's ground up a little bit there, and we just kind of shake it through. So we've come to the conclusion we're not going to grind it all up, because we're probably just going to use it in our coffee and such anyways for right now. Here, just show them. So that's the, the larger pieces. Yeah, They're, so... Uh, if you eat one, they break down real quick. So yeah, we're it's, thinking if you're doing something in a liquid, it's not going to be. A it's not going to be a problem. It will break down, and then we've got our finer bits, finer the, powdery uh, type stuff that we did grind up. So we're just going to weigh this to see what we ended up as a final product. We've got a uh, two cup uh, or one pint mason jar on the uh, scale. I think we're maybe going to have a cup of sugar. Not quite. Mm -hmm. So we ended up with 170 grams of sugar. Can't really see it very well, but it's sort of like a brown sugar or a raw sugar, mm -hmm. I would say. It's uh, it doesn't have a really strong molasses flavor, even though it's quite dark. Um, it's quite, um, well, it's sugar, it's sweet, but it's it's quite mild and it doesn't really taste like beets at all. No, it's it's similar in the strength or sweetness level as maple sugar would be. Yeah. It's not still, that... It's different, but yeah, that's probably the most comparable thing. Mm -hmm. so, so, all anyway. in all, final synopsis on the experiment, Chris? I think it's a plus, and we found Definitely out a few plus. little things along the way where it's like, we were talking this morning, you might do some just as syrup. Mm -hmm. um, Heck, if you grow enough of them, I would just eat them. <laughs> and the bonus, I don't think we actually uh, videoed the stuff that the pulp that we took out to the animals in the end. No, they ate to it. feed. They loved it. Yeah. So. so you also get the byproduct, which is animal feed. Mm -hmm. So, all in all, not too bad. We're gonna give her a crack again this year, and we'll probably do up another video and see how we improve. We'll probably grow a lot more. Yes. But anyways, that's our little, uh, I don't know, sugar adventure. <laughs>